Hello, my name is Joanne Cooper. I'm a singer-songwriter from Johannesburg, South Africa, and welcome to my tiny home studio. And welcome to this special video tutorial, uh, especially for the Musical You community. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a backing track using PG Music's Band in a Box product. And using this backing track you can do all sorts of things like play along and sing along and improvise over it. But before I get into the video tutorial, I just want to mention a video course that I've just finished making called First Song with Band in a Box, where I take you through the whole process of uh, writing, recording, mixing, mastering and producing, and also releasing your own song um, using Band in a Box from PG Music. You can access the course directly from my website and the link um, is in the show notes. On to today's topic. I'm going to demonstrate to you how I can very quickly and easily make a backing track for a popular song or for a song that you have composed yourself so that you can practice and sing over it. I'll show you how to change the key, how to change the tempo, how to change the groove, how to change the instrumentation of the backing track. And this all will give you endless opportunities to practice on. For this video, I will assume that you've already purchased and installed Band in a Box from PG Music. But if you haven't, there's a link to the PG Music's website in the show notes. So the first step is to choose the song that you want to use. For this video tutorial, I have chosen Amazing Grace, purely because uh, I don't want to get into trouble over copyrighted material and, and Amazing Grace is a public domain song. So I'm going to be walking you through how I make a backing track for Amazing Grace, but you're welcome to choose um, any song or a song of your own um, of your own composing. Um, I just recommend that when you're starting out with Band in a Box that you choose something fairly easy until you become familiar with the process. So step number two is to get the basic chord for the song. Um, if you don't already have them, um, I use a site called uh, Ultimate Guitar, www.ultimateguitar. So I just go to that site and type in the name of the, of the song that I'm trying to make a backing track for, Amazing Grace. And you'll see here there's two versions, there's Daniel Thomas's version and then there's a miscellaneous traditional version. I normally just select the one with the most stars and the most reviews. So there's one here with 508 um, and, a, and a four and a half star rating, so I'm just going to select that. Okay, so it takes me in and it'll show me the chords that I can use for this song. I won't worry too much at this stage what key um, the song is going to be in because I will show you a little bit later how to to change the key um, for you to, and for you to practice in different keys. So the first step is to open up Band in a Box on your computer and you can see here it's opened up a blank song and change the end uh, number of bars to something arbitrary, say pick a hundred, that'll give you enough space, and change the number of choruses to one. Um, then the next step is to have a look and see if you can find a style that you can um, use for your song. So if you open the style picker, you open, if, you, if you open up the style picker, you see on the right hand side here, type in the name of a familiar song title and it'll give you the style filters. Obviously not all the songs are in there, but, but many of the well-known songs and performers are in there. So I'm just going to type in Amazing Grace here. And you can see I've got uh, two versions here. I've got American Traditional, which has got a folk um, backing. It's a waltz and it's 85 temper. So if I double click that, it'll bring up styles that will suit that song and I can audition them. And I can pick one that I fancy. So I'm going to start with my Lily Old Time Auto Harp Waltz. So I select that style, I press Enter. And you can see here it's put the style here um, and the tempo at 85 and it's given you the, the real tracks that make up that style. So in this particular 
style that I've chosen, which is my Lily style old time auto harp waltz. There's a bass, there's a guitar, there's a drums, there's another guitar, and there's the auto harp. So those are the real tracks that are making up that style. Now, real tracks are actual samples of real musicians that have recorded these instruments. And Band in a Box is clever enough to adjust these real tracks to the chord progression key and tempo that you choose for your song. So the next step I'm going to do is figure out what key uh, this song is that I'm trying to make a backing track for. This particular one I can see is in G. Um, quite often it's the first uh, chord um, in the song in the, or the last chord or both will be the key. Um, often you can tell by the, the, the chord progression what key it's in. But I'm sure Musical U has lots of different ways of determining the key that a song is in. So you can also look for the sheet music um, for Amazing Grace and it'll tell you what key it's in. So this particular one I know is in G. If you can't figure out what key your song is in, then maybe try select a different song. Take a shortcut. But for this one, I know that it's in G, so I'm going to type, I'm going to select the key of G. The desired tempo, you need to figure out what tempo you want the song in. Um, I'm going to leave it at 85 and see, see how that works. So the next step is to type in the actual chords that you see here on Ultimate Guitar. I usually make an introduction of either two or four bars. For this particular one, I'm just going to leave it as, as two bars. So I've got a two bar introduction in G. And I literally just start typing in the chords. So I think I've got Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. That's saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Okay, um, and let, let me just listen to that and make sure that I've got everything in the right in the right place and sing along with it. That sounds good. So all I'll do is I'll carry on typing in the chords. In this particular song, it's very, very easy because all the chords are exactly the same for the refrains and for the verses. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy. I'm just going to copy that down however many times. Two three, four, I think there are five verses, one, one, two, three, four, I think this has only got four, one, two, three, four. This particular version's only got four, but obviously uh, other versions have got more have got more verses and more refrains. So I'm just going to leave this at four for now. One, two, three, four, and I set the end bar to be 66. Okay, um, and then what I sometimes do is I change the part markers. The blue part markers um, play a more simple arrangement, specifically on the drums, but sometimes on other instruments. And the green part markers play a little bit of a busier arrangement. So I'll sometimes use the green marker for the um, choruses and the blue marker for the verses. And then it changes the drum pattern. Okay, so I'm going to say G there and put another green one there. And, and that is it. So I can play the song all the way through from beginning to end there. So now you've got your, your backing track, your basic backing track in the key of G, and I'm just going to play the backing track and sing and play along with it a little bit.
backing track in the key of G for Amazing Grace and I'm going to show you some of the things that you can do with this track. The first thing is you can change the key so pull down this little key indicator. I'm going to try and play it in the key of D. I know that D is probably going to be a little bit high for my voice but anyway I'm going to give it a bash. Idea just to to try and play it in all the keys that you can that you can so I could play it in A if, if I like and you just know take notice of how the chord progression changes with the keys another trick is to change the tempo um, I'm going to take it up a little bit and take it up to 120 and see if I can play along with it Another thing that you can do um, is you can change the groove completely. So this particular song was a waltz, so I can change it to another style that's not a waltz. So I'm going to just have a look here. I'm going to select the folk category and I'm going to sort by tempo so I get the slowest ones up at the top. And I'm going to select something that's not a, a waltz. So let's have a listen, listen to this one. So I'm going to select that one. So this is now not a waltz anymore. You can see that it's 4-4. Four, four. I'm going to change that back down to one to 85, the tempo back down to 85. Okay, and I can play along with this new groove. a specific um, instrument and try and copy how that instrument is playing so there you can see a guitar acoustic spirited so let's isolate that and see if we can strum along with how that guitar is playing
Another thing that you can do with the band in a box is um, learn how to play with a kapha. Um, so you can set, say in this example, the key of the, of the backtrack is in A, but I can play the chords with my kappa on kappa 2 as if it's in G. So transpose, learn to transpose on, to learn to transpose on the fly. So another thing that um, this band in a box backing track can do for you is you can improvise over it. So select your favorite key to improvise over, C, hit play and just start improvising over it. And once you've done that for the key of C say, change it to the key of G and improvise over that for a while. And carry on doing that until you've covered all 12 keys by which stage you'll be pretty good at all your scales. As you can see, there's endless possibilities for this marvelous tool for you to improvise over and improve your overall musicality. I hope you've enjoyed this very short tutorial and that if you have got band in a box already, you will try some of these things with making backing tracks. And I hope that you'll check out my first song with band in a box course on my website. Bye bye for now.